Hi there, it's Benji80 here on Benji80 England. This is my review of the movie Speak No Evil. Uh, Speak No Evil uh, was released on Friday the 13th of September of this year, 2024, and I went and watched it on a Tuesday uh, the 24th of September, 2024. Um, today's Thursday the 26th of September, I'm reviewing it now. Um, I just checked the box office figures. Um, as of Tuesday the 24th of September, that's the most recent box office figures I can uh, get hold of. Uh, it's made um, about $43 million worldwide on a $15 million budget, um, so it's doing all right. Uh, it's from the production company Bloomhouse, from what I know of them. Uh, I've not seen a lot of films from that production company, but they make a lot of money from relatively low or lower budget horror movies. Um, a family member asked me how I would describe this movie immediately after I watched it, and I said a psychological horror. I'll come back to that. In fact, that's exactly how Wikipedia described it. Um, anyway, as always, there will be... Uh, I don't include clips in my uh, videos, and um, I will save the rating out of 10 until the end of the video, and there will be no spoilers in this video. I absolutely won't spoil this movie. Um, so uh, it's written on, um, Speak No Evil is written and directed by James Watkins. It's a remake uh, of a Danish film from 2022. That was news to me when I looked this up on Wikipedia. Um, haven't seen the original. Um, James Watkins uh, directed 2008's Eden Lake. Uh, oh, James Watkins is an English director. This, in my opinion, is an English film, actually. Um, Speak No Evil. Eden Lake most definitely is an English film. It came out in 2008. I particularly like that movie. I have it on DVD. That will get its own review if I'm going to talk about it in detail. I may or may not review it. I'm not going to go into it in detail on this video, though. But Eden Lake I like a lot. James Watkins also directed The Woman in Black, starring Daniel Radcliffe. It's a ghost story. Um, the same relative that asked me what I thought of Speak No Evil particularly likes that. Uh, the Woman in Black, I don't. I'm not into ghost stories. I'm not. Into, um, and I'll say something about Speak No Evil. Psychological horror describes it well. Uh, if it was to be approached uh, by somebody expecting, if someone expected demons, exorcisms, uh, anything supernatural or ghosts, no. Uh, that's not what Speak No Evil is about. There's nothing supernatural whatsoever in it, and there's certainly not any demons or exorcisms or anything like that. It's not that kind of film. I don't like those kinds of films. Uh, I think they're ridiculous. I think they're terrible, and I, I have seen some of those films, but with other people. Um, this is not that type of film. Now, Speak No Evil, in my opinion, is most notable for James McAvoy and his performance in it, and I'm going to go into that in detail now. Uh, James McAvoy is a Scottish actor um, who was born, well, he's a couple of years older than me, he's 45, James McAvoy. I wasn't sure how old he was, I knew he was in his 40s, I knew he was older than me. Uh, I guess late 40s, he's 45, uh, so he's a couple of years older than me. Um, he's Scottish. Um, now, again, this same relative said, well, the thing is, right, I go to the cinema a lot, and I saw Speak No Evil advertised a couple of times over the last few times I went to the cinema, uh, up to, this is the most recent film I've watched in the cinema, Speak No Evil, and I saw it advertised a couple of times, and I liked the look of it, and I mentioned it to this relative, and I said, McAvoy looks great in it, and I mentioned something very notable about him in this, and this relative, after me watching it, said, you don't normally like McAvoy, and that's absolutely right, and the reason for that is, I've never seen a film with him in that I like. Um, now, I've gone back and looked through his uh, filmography on Wikipedia, he was in uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe, playing Mr. Tumnus, which I didn't remember. Um, he, he's played a lot of good guys, uh, a lot of guys with a posh English accent. He, James McAvoy, although he's Scottish, does a, a good, uh, he does a good posh English accent. Um, and I'll come to that in a minute as well. Um, so, I mean, he is in a couple of films. That, I mean, he's in a film called Welcome to the Punch with Mark Strong. That's a crime film. I started watching it before and I just didn't like it. it reminded me what I remember of it it reminded me of a BBC or an ITV drama just not very good not very good acting not very good production values not very high production values it, it reminded me of a crappy crime TV show that would be on TV here in Britain either on BBC or ITV that's the impression I got of it I didn't like it and he's also in a thing called Filth that I tried watching um, that is about a corrupt police officer that does a lot of uh, illicit substances and a lot of um, 
well, corrupt things in it, and I just didn't like the tone of it. So he has play. I mean, so he plays. Um, what I'm going to say is he tends to play good guys. Um, I'll come to some other parts he's played uh, with posh English accents as well. Um, uh, sometimes with his own Scottish accent, sometimes with an American accent as well. Uh, you can do accents well enough. You can do them well. Um, but um, so the two things he's been in that I might have liked, I've tried watching. Welcome to the Punch. I tried watching a couple of times. I didn't like it. Phil, I watched a bit of it, turned it off. Just didn't like it. It wasn't to my taste. Um, everything else he's in. He's in um, those more recent X Men movies as Charles Xavier again, posh Englishman, good guy. Um, He's in The Last King of Scotland with Forrest Whitaker. That's going back uh, quite a few years. Again, playing a, a posh kid. Um, a university... No, I can't remember exactly what part he's playing in that, actually. But he's he's the hero of the piece. I, I didn't... Again, I didn't like The Last King of Scotland. I'm not saying he's a bad film. I just don't like... He's in Atonement. Didn't like that. I don't like any films that James McAvoy's in. He's also in um, uh, the two M. Night Shyamalan films. Uh, one of them's called Glass, and I can't remember what the other one's called. Split. Split came out in 2016, and Glass came out in 2019. He plays a character called the Beast. Uh, he's he's quite muscular and physical in that, and he's a villain essentially. But again, I'll be honest. I hate M Night Shyamalan films. M Night Shyamalan films. I hate them. And I've seen, I haven't seen Split, but I've seen Glass. Watched it with the same relative who does like James McAvoy, and they wanted to see it, and so I watched it with them. Um, I hated it. I thought, shit, I've never seen an M. Night Shyamalan film that I don't think is shit. The one I like the most is The Happening, the one with Mark Wahlberg in it, and that's the one that's most derided. That's the one that's closest to a film that I like, um, but I don't like it. Uh, um, and he's also, uh, I've just, oh yeah, in part two of It, he plays Bill Denver, so that's the hero uh, of part two of it, I haven't seen it, part one or part two, that's the two part film based on Stephen King's book, I have read a bit of the book, but way too long winded for me, life is too short, I haven't got time for that book, I have started it before, um, and uh, so, I, you know, it, it's it, a film based on the Stephen King book, a huge Stephen King book, it's well over a thousand pages, um, it's a two part movie, he plays the hero the main hero in the second part, Bill Denver. So again, good guy, tends to play good guys. Well, anyway, in this, Speak Navy doesn't play a good guy, and it's not a shitty M. Night Shyamalan film. It's a really good uh, psychological horror movie that I consider an English movie, and it has a very English tone to it, or British tone. I'll call it a British tone, because although James McAvoy is Scottish and I'm English, we both live uh, on the British Isles. England is a country in Britain, and so is Scotland. So is Wales, all on, on the British Isles. Um, and I'm not going to give any spoilers here, but the majority of this film is set in the West Country, um, which is the southwest of England, for those of you who don't live here um, uh, and are not familiar with the geography of this country. Um, now, I spent two years living in the West Country, and James McAvoy for this film does a West Country accent, and he does it well. There are a lot of nuances. If you're not English, you might not be able to tell the difference between my accent, his accent in this film, or his accent when he's doing a posh English voice. But there are nuances. There are nuances. There are big differences. And his West Country accent is very good, very convincing, apart from twice when it slips. Right at the start, it slips into his Scottish accent very briefly. I'm nitpicking here. And there's one point when he's talking to uh, another character played by Scoot McNary, um, and uh, it slips into posh English very briefly. But then it's back to his West Country accent. He's, he's a working class guy in this. And I'm going to go into the type of guy he is. Um, so the other um, performers in this, there are four main adult performers. James McAvoy, Scoot McNary, who, amongst other things, is in uh, Narcos Mexico. Uh, he's a very good actor, Scoot McNary, an American actor. He plays all sorts of parts. He's versatile. He, he has often played bad guys, actually, or more than one occasion he's played bad guys. He's a really good actor, Scoot McNary. That is not the type of part he's playing in this, but I'm not going to give anything away. Um, it also stars uh, an, uh, Mackenzie Davies, who played the female cyborg in Terminator Dark Fate. That's the thing I've seen her in before now, the film I've seen her in before now. She's a tall, blonde Canadian actress. She's attractive. Um, and then the... Uh, so that's three of the adult performers, two actors, the actress Mackenzie Davis and an actress called Ailing Franciosi. I'd never seen her before. She does a good job. Uh, I can't remember if she's English or Irish. Um, 
she's I had never seen this actress before, but they're all good. There are also a couple of kid actors in uh, well, kid performers in this, uh, an actress and an actor. Uh, they are both they both do play their parts very well. Everybody's very good in this, and um, there are a couple of other adult um, performers in it. A couple of actors can't remember their names. They're minor parts. Um, so James McAvoy plays a part in this, who is um, a uh, so obviously I'm English. Now, there's a certain type of English bloke, and we don't know what bloke means. Uh, it's an English slang phrase for man, basically. Uh, it's to address a grown male, basically, if you don't know. That's, I've found often Americans don't know what that means, and they might even misunderstand what it means. Uh, so, yeah, he's a very typical type of English bloke. Now, he's extremely muscular in this James McAvoy. Um, I mean, he's immense. That's what stood out to me in the advert. I thought, well, look at James McAvoy. He's absolutely changed his physique. Um, and I'll say this as well. He's 45. So he, I don't think he necessarily... I haven't looked into this. Uh, this is my guess. I don't think he necessarily changed his physique for the film. I think maybe as a 45-year-old man, he's changed his physique anyway. And he wants to be in that kind of shape. And good for him. Uh, I exercise and take care of myself. I'm not built like that. Um... What I'll say is that as we get older as men, it becomes harder to stay in shape. And so it becomes more motivating. It certainly does to me. Obviously, it has done for James McAvoy. Look at Tom Hardy. He's uh, 46. He's always been in excellent shape, though, Tom Hardy. Um, there's also an English actor called Stephen Graham. He's 51. He's a particular favourite of mine. He's recently got into shape uh, to play a fighter. It's either a mixed martial arts fighter or a boxer. I can't remember off the top of my head. And he's absolutely immense. He's a stocky guy, a stocky little guy. He's a short guy, Stephen Graham. I'm not saying that to him, so but he is. He's a short, stocky guy. He's always been in quite good shape, quite robust, but he's absolutely immense now. Now, I think that particularly as guys get older, these guys in particular, they've got themselves in that shape. Maybe they're going to want to stay in that shape because it's very hard to get into that shape in the first place. All right, these are these are actors, right? Big time actors. They've got the, the diet, they've got the dietitians, they've got the personal trainers, you know, they can set aside hours a day to do this, but it is still difficult. And why would they not want to stay in that shape? It's just my guess. James McAvoy's got into this shape for himself and he's going to stay in the shape because he didn't need to be this immense for the part. He needs to be in shape for the part because he's an intimidating bloke that he's playing, an intimidating guy. Now, when I say he's a very typical type of a... Uh, English bloke of at least of my generation I'm in my 40s right there are guys that um come and I'm not going to spoil anything here because it's clear from the even the poster for the movie at least the poster here in Britain and here in England McAvoy's not a good guy in this he's not the hero right and certainly the the adverts that I've seen I've seen the same advert twice it, it makes it clear he's not the good guy um and he's an intimidating guy but on the surface he's nice there's this niceness to him, but it's only on the surface, and it's very easy to see through, particularly if you know what you're looking for. Um, and, like, he's a hard guy. Assuming in the film, looking at him, he's a hard guy, he's a scary guy, he's not a guy you'd want to mess with. Um, I mean, all right, in real life, James McAvoy might not be a hard guy, it might all just be muscle for show, but in the film, this is a guy that I certainly would not mess with, and most sensible people wouldn't want to mess with. Not only is he a big intimidating guy a big powerful guy physically powerful guy there's an air of menace about him uh, constantly underneath the surface if you know what you're looking for again he has this veneer of being nice when he's not there are some great sort of deranged looks that james mcavoy gives throughout the uh, film he's excellent in this he really is um i'll summarize how good he is because all i can really do is talk about the, his performance because i don't want to spoil the film um um and I've come across blokes like that. Um, they're best avoided, to be honest with you. They're often very popular. They, in one way, might be seen as alpha males. They're also loose cannons, uh, liabilities as well. You don't know what they're going to do. Now, he he manages to keep himself... I don't want to spoil the film. I'm not going to spoil anything. But there's this veneer of menace with him. Like I say, James McAvoy does some great deranged looks. And I will say, that I've, I went to watch it at the cinema... Um, as I said, on Tuesday night, the 24th. So it's been a week and a half at that point. And there are only three of us in there, myself and a couple of women sat towards the back. Um, now, there's some very dark humour in this film, and I was laughing at it. Uh, and at first they weren't, and then they, I 
thing entered the spirit of it. I don't care, but the two women entered the spirit of it and started laughing at some of the dark humour as well. Now, the, this is not spoiling anything, but the song Eternal Flame by the Bangles, it's an 80s song, a massive hit from the 80s. It plays an extremely amusing part in this film. Uh, it's actually pretty hilarious. Uh, I won't say anything else. You'll know the scene when it comes up. Um, yeah, James McAvoy is extremely menacing in this, extremely convincing, and he's also funny, but in a very, in a very dark way. But it's a quite a hilarious performance as well, over the top, but in a good way. Um, I actually think that if awards are worth anything anymore, uh, he would be worthy of being nominated for awards. Will he? Probably not. It's a Bloom House horror movie. Um, uh, but it's a really great performance. It's really convincing. As I say, I've encountered blokes like this, blokes just like this. It's a very specific type of working class English bloke. Big, powerful, strong. Physic they're always physically powerful and strong, muscular, intimidating. Um, maybe affable and friendly, but only on the very surface. There's an aspect to them, an element to them. As I say, not not all as bad as uh, James McAvoy's character in this, I hope. Um, but they're similar. There's, it's a similar type of bloke, a similar type of guy um, that is unique, I think, to Britain. There will be sim, you know, the, in other parts of the world, there will be guys who will share similarities with this. But this is very specific. This is why, to me, this is an English film. This is a very convincing portrayal of a very specific type of bloke type of bloke and um, I imagine James McAvoy himself has encountered them um, and maybe even modelled this performance on them. Um, I, I'm labouring this point but there really are guys like this in this country. Um, like I say they tend to be popular, women like them, they tend to ha have a crowd around them, you know, uh, loud, larger than life, physically intimidating, um, people are drawn to them, can seem on the surface to be friendly but there's a there's an edge to them. Um, and it's and their niceness is only surface level. It, it, if that, like McAvoy, can barely contain who he really is in this, it's a great performance. It, on its own, it makes it worth watching. But I had a really good time watching the film. I mean, there are only three of us in the cinema, in the auditorium, um, watching it on the screen that I was watching. It on. Now that was 9 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Okay, at a cinema that often doesn't get very busy. It's a cinema that does get busy with certain films at certain times, but it's generally a quiet cinema that. Um, in my opinion, though, this film won't be around at the cinema much longer. This is a film that's worth watching in the cinema. It's worth watching in the dark in the cinema. I really like the atmosphere of it. I think it's great, to be honest with you. I'll come to my rating very shortly. Now, this might not... I mean, it's doing all right in America. Um, it's got a very English feel to it. Um, and uh, McAvoy plays a very English type of guy, very English type of bloke. Um, I might have thought... Um, that Americans wouldn't take to this, but it's doing all right there. It was, you know, it's done all right, and it's done consistently all right over two weekends. So obviously, some some people in America are seeing something in it, and so good. But this is very specific to England, um, in terms of well, even the setting, the West Country, um, also the character, the character played by James McAvoy, as I've laboured at this point. Um, I suggest watching it in the cinema. Uh, I think it, I had a great time watching it. I think it's really good. So here's my rating out of 10. I've given this some thought. Now, I have come. I came close to giving it an 8, an 8 out of 10, but that would be a generous 8 out of 10. Now, I'm harsh with my ratings, all right? I, I'm not generous with my ratings. So I'm going to give this a very strong 7 out of 10. I came close to giving it um, an 8 out of 10, but it would have been a weak 8 out of 10. It would have been a weak 8 out of 10. Um, so I'm giving it a harsh 7 out of 10 instead. Um, I don't give half marks, obviously, that's absolutely pointless. Um, the whole rating system breaks down at that point. Um, it, so as I say, I was tempted to give it a weak 8 out of 10. I might have just now said harsh 8 out of 10. I, I was tempted to give it a weak 8 out of 10. Instead, I'm giving it a very harsh 7 out of 10. Um, so I'm consistent in my ratings out of 10. I'm consistent with my harshness. I do highly recommend the film. Avoid reading too much about it. Avoid any spoilers. If you've got the chance, uh, still, if it's still a available at the cinema, uh, the cinema near you, a cinema near you, go and watch it in the cinema. Uh, otherwise, check it out at the earliest opportunity. It's a really good film. James McAvoy is great in it. And if he continues to play parts like this, I'll look out for him in future. Anyway, 
If you like the video, hit that like button and give it a thumbs up. If you know something you think might get something from it, share it with them. Um, subscribe and when you do, ring the notification bell. Go back and watch all my older content and feel free to leave a comment. If it's respectful and worth replying to, I will. If it isn't respectful, uh, I'll remove it. Uh, and I might remove it. I may well remove it. And you are no longer welcome uh, in the comment sections on my videos. It's Benji80 on Benji80 England. I'll see you next time.